looking for a cross-country mountain bike, it's probably the topic that comes up the most. It can also be a very difficult decision to make when buying a cross-country mountain bike. So in this video, I'm going to do some comparisons to try to help you out. I'm going to use two very similar cross-country bikes in this comparison. In fact, they're going to use the exact same wheels. One's a hardtail and one's a full suspension. I'm going to do this video behind bars. No, I'm not going to be in prison. I'm going to do it for my bike saddle and I'm going to talk through the differences as I ride. We're going to do a cross-country lap and we're going to compare the times of the two bikes. That should satisfy the cross-country speed freaks that want to know which one could be faster for them. But I'm also going to talk through the ride characteristics and talk about which bike would be better for which individual. The Giant XTC Plus is a hardtail that accepts 27.5 plus wheels and that's how it comes out of the box but it also can accept 29er wheels. So I've taken the 29er wheels off my full suspension cross country race bike. So this is a hardtail with a full carbon frame. It's got pretty much a Shimano XT drivetrain and Shimano XT brakes. And it's got a Fox fork that's 120 millimeters of travel. My full suspension bike is a Niner RKT9 RDO. It's also a full carbon frame. It's got Shimano XT and race face components and Shimano XT brakes. It too has a Fox fork that's 100 millimeters of travel and the rear suspension is 90 millimeters of travel. Now this bike's not rolling too fast because the race wheels are now on the Giant XTC. So the first day I'm gonna head out on the hardtail, the Giant XTC. I'm gonna do a couple timed cross country loops, see how the times compare. But before and after the loops, I'm gonna talk through the ride qualities of the bike. I'm gonna talk about how the hardtail feels compared to the full suspension. Then the following day, I'll head out on the full suspension bike, the Niner RKT9 RDO using the same wheel, so we'll get a pretty good comparison. I'll talk about how that bike feels compared to the hardtail, and of course, I'll repeat the cross-country laps, and we'll see how the times are. So today I'm rolling along on the 29er hardtail, and the first thing I wanna talk about is who would benefit from buying a hardtail. First of all, I always recommend a hardtail to someone who's newer to the sport of mountain biking. There's a few reasons for that. The main reason is because riding a hardtail develops your skills faster. You cannot get lazy on a hardtail. You have to choose your lines more carefully and it teaches you to engage your core when riding a bicycle, maneuvering the bike more than you would on a full suspension. A hardtail makes you pick the bike up more over bumps, makes you learn how to get out of the saddle and move the bike around and teaches you how to handle the bike. The other reason that I recommend a hardtail for newer riders is because they're usually at a lower price point. Someone who's newer to the sport of riding probably is not gonna wanna go out and buy a three or $4,000 mountain bike. They wanna make sure they enjoy the sport and it's something that they wanna commit to financially. You do not wanna buy a cheap full suspension bike it will not be a pleasure to ride. For your money, you get a lot more bike with a hardtail. So that's another reason that I recommend someone newer to the sport of cycling to look at a hardtail. And finally, hardtails are less complex, they're less maintenance, and someone who's new to the sport wants to focus on learning how to ride, not necessarily focusing too much on maintaining a bike. Although today's full suspension bikes are pretty low maintenance, there's still more to think about when setting up a bike and maintaining it. So let's talk about some advantages of a hardtail. And these actually apply whether you're new to the sport or whether you've been riding for a long time. The first thing is they're typically lighter weight than a full suspension bike. They're gonna climb better. And especially looking at the same price point a hardtail is going to be lighter than a full suspension. Another advantage of a hardtail is instant power transfer. What I mean by that is when you put pressure on the pedals, there's not going to be any rear suspension to absorb that energy that you're putting into the pedals. Especially if you get out of the saddle on a climb or on a sprint, as soon as you start pedaling, the thing goes. On a full suspension bike, especially when you get out of the saddle, the suspension can actually absorb some of your power. Now you can develop a riding style to minimize that, but there's still a possibility of that happening. But today, 
on the higher end full suspension bikes they're designed with linkages and features in the shocks to really minimize that pedal bob and energy absorption but with a hardtail it is instant power transfer especially on climbs like this and while we're speaking of climbing this is where hardtails really shine one because they're lighter two because they have that instant power transfer and you don't really need as much suspension when you're climbing because your speeds are lower on a full suspension bike when the terrain is really technical it is nice to have your suspension absorb some of the bumps so that your rear tire doesn't slip out another advantage of hardtails is that typically the wheelbase is going to be shorter and the chain stay is going to be shorter and the chain stay is the part of the frame that goes from your cranks to your rear hub and what that does is it allows the bike to be more nimble around corners and this is especially true as you develop your mountain bike skills it just allows the bike to more easily get around corners so when you pick it up you can really maneuver the bike easier because of that tighter wheelbase so a lot of people really appreciate the snappy handling that comes from a hardtail also i like the way hardtails go back and forth between turns it's almost like the rear of the bike snaps out of the corner and sets you up for the next one tire choice is pretty crucial on a hardtail your tires are your first line of defense against bumps even before shocks and suspension forks and that's why today's plus size bikes have really breathed new life into hardtails they allow hardtails to cover more rough terrain and allow you to descend better and faster with more control than you would with a standard width tire. And speaking of descending, that's one area that you can really develop your skills on with a hardtail. Someone who learns to descend well on a hardtail is going to have a much better advantage as a rider. The new plus size tires also give hardtails more grip when climbing when you're in loose steep terrain. Alright so that's enough talking about the bikes. Now it's time to put the gloves on and let the hardtail battle it out with a full suspension. All right, I'll do my first loop and I'll report back of what my time is. I'm back at home after my day out on the hardtail and I wanted to wait till I got home so I could download the ride and get my heart rate data for the time lapse. So here are the times. The first lap that I did was 1347. If you paid attention to my videos from a couple weeks ago when I was doing the plus bike versus the full suspension, um, that's exactly the same time as my best lap on the full suspension bike on that first lap and that is 25 seconds faster than my best time on the same bike with the plus size wheels. My heart rate was 169 average with a 181 max. 
and that's a little bit lower than it was a couple weeks ago but i think it's because i'm really well rested i just got back from a beach vacation some time off the bike feel really good really fresh and so that's why i think my heart rate was a little bit lower on the second loop i had a time of 12 22. Uh, that is six seconds slower than my best time on the full suspension and 18 seconds faster than my best time on the same bike with the plus size wheels. Now, are conditions the same? Am I, is my physical fitness the same? I'm not really sure. So tomorrow's test on the full suspension is the one that I'm really gonna put the weight in because tomorrow when I head out, I feel like the trail conditions are gonna be exactly the same as they were today. Weather's not gonna change. Uh, I feel like my physical fitness is gonna be exactly the same tomorrow when I head out. So I think it'll be a really fair comparison. A couple things I wanna mention is one is I'm still really digging the geometry on the Giant XTC. It's got a little bit slacker head angle, it's got the 120 fork, and it's got a lot of confidence in the corners. There were a couple times when I was riding today, pushing it hard, that I almost washed the front wheel out, but I was able to correct it real easily on the, the XTC, just because that geometry is so stable. The other thing that I wanna mention that I noticed today is on the second loop that had a little bit longer downhills um, with some roots is I felt like my legs got a little fatigued uh, because I'm pushing hard and then I'm having to go downhill. And on a hardtail, you're using your legs as your suspension and uh, that can cause some fatigue in your legs. And when it came time to, to, to go up a hill, uh, I felt like they weren't quite as fresh. So again, that's a consideration. Uh, the longer your ride, the rougher the descents, the more that's gonna uh, have an effect on you. So again, tomorrow, I'm gonna head back out, do the exact same loops as I did today on the full suspension, and we'll see how it goes. I'll pick it back up then. Today, I'm out on the full suspension bike, and I wanna mention something for an advantage of a hardtail, and that is the fact that they are lower maintenance. And I kind of talked about that for new riders, but I want to talk a little bit more. So full suspension bikes obviously have shocks and pivots, both of which will require some maintenance at one point. Typically a shock, you need to send back to the manufacturer once a year for a tune-up, and that's pretty pricey. Also, if you ride in muddy or nasty conditions, you will have to replace the pivots on a full suspension bike maybe once a year, once every two years. So that's something to consider. So that's an advantage for hardtails is that you don't have that maintenance. So with that, let's get into some advantages of full suspension. To me, the three main advantages are comfort, control, and braking performance. Those are the three top advantages for a full suspension. So let's talk about comfort first. On a full suspension bike, little undulations and divots in the trail, you don't even think about. And on a hardtail, you feel all of those. So when riding along and hitting small stuff, you can stay in the saddle. And that's one thing that I really like about full suspension is the fact that I can focus on getting power to the rear wheel as opposed to getting out of the saddle and absorbing bumps. And the longer your ride is, the more that comfort comes into play. And that's why a lot of endurance racers will be on full suspension. A full suspension 29er cross country bike can be the perfect choice for someone who's racing endurance. Because even though you might be a little bit faster on a hardtail in the beginning of the race, after the fatigue sets in, and all those little bumps kind of get to you, you're gonna be fresher and faster at the end of a longer event or a longer ride on a full suspension bike. Now let's talk about control. Full suspension bikes allow the bike to stay planted and not bounce around as much, which gives you more control especially on a descent. So when you're descending, the suspension absorbs those bumps and keeps them from transferring to you as the rider. Now let's talk about braking performance. As you apply the rear brake, the rear tire has to grip the ground in order 
for your bike to slow down. And on a hardtail, sometimes the rear tire is skipping off the ground, albeit for a fraction of a second, but it still affects how the bike handles as far as braking. And so on a full suspension bike, the tire stays glued to the ground and allows the braking performance to be much better. And the rougher the terrain, the more a full suspension bike is going to grip when applying the brakes and allows you to brake later into a corner because you have more confidence that the bike's going to slow down and not skid. On a hardtail, you find yourself skidding into a corner a little bit more because you don't have that rear tire staying glued to the ground like you do on a full suspension bike. So the improved braking performance and the increased control of a full suspension bike makes them have the advantage on a descent. So just like a hardtail kind of has an advantage on a climb, a full suspension has an advantage on the descents. I'm going to continue to warm up and then I'll do the cross country laps on this full suspension bike and see how the times compare to the hardtail. And like I said, they have the same wheels. The main difference is the frame. And I'm very curious to see how these two compare on back to back days of testing. So I'll report back after my laps and let you know how the full suspension did. Just finished the laps on the full suspension and I'm shooting this video out on the trail. I went ahead and uploaded the ride so I could go ahead and get my heart rate data. And the first thing I want to say about this bike is even at 90 millimeters of travel, this bike feels like a magic carpet ride. I just, I love riding the full suspension out here. The other thing I want to mention is I did leave the remote lockout lever in the middle setting. I, I wanted to keep this bike as a full suspension. I didn't want to put it in hardtail mode by locking it out. So I wanted to get a really good idea of hardtail versus full suspension. So on the first lap, I had a 1341 on this bike. So that's six seconds faster than yesterday on the hardtail. Trail conditions, weather, physical condition felt exactly the same as yesterday. My average heart rate on that first lap was 170 today. Yesterday was 169, so feeling about the same as far as the effort. A max of 182 today, yesterday was a max of 181. So really identical uh, in terms of the heart rate. On the second loop, today I had a 1211. Yesterday was a 1222, so 11 seconds faster. Same average heart rate, 170 today, yesterday was same, 169. Uh, today's max was 184, yesterday's max was 182. So again, heart rate data about the same, showing that I put in about the same effort in both of these laps. The times are not that drastic, but understand this is a 12, 13 minute lap. As you continue on in a cross country race, uh, not only do I feel like you'll be faster as the race goes on on the full suspension, but if you multiply that times that time times you know 10, which would be about the length of a cross country race, you know, you're talking a few minutes difference between the two. So the point is on my trail conditions on, on with my type of riding, I am faster on a full suspension bike. I also enjoy the ride better. Now it did take a little bit more effort sometimes to get the rear tire of the full suspension around the corner versus the hardtail. I felt like the hardtail, I could whip it around quicker. Um, not only slide it a little bit more if I have to, which I don't like to do a lot because it's not good for the trail, um, but I just felt like I could get the rear end of the bike 
around the corner better on the hardtail than the full suspension. But that being said, overall, personally, I like the ride quality of the full suspension bike. So I am going to go ahead and wrap up this video. I've said a lot. Um, no need to put in a, a closing discourse on this video. I will probably follow up this video with another one that's going to be shorter, that's a little bit more of a discourse uh, talking about the highlights of, of this test. Um, but this one's gotten long enough. So, hey, thanks for watching. It's been fun doing this video, and I hope you've learned a lot. And, and if you're looking at buying a full suspension or hardtail, uh, I really hope I helped you out with this video. Thanks for watching. Hardtail versus full suspension. When shopping for a cross country mountain bike, it's probably the topic that comes up the most. It can also be a very difficult decision to make when buying a cross country mountain bike. So in this video, I'm gonna do some comparisons to try to help you out. I'm gonna use two very similar cross country bikes in this comparison. In fact, they're gonna use the exact same wheels. One's a hardtail and one's a full suspension. I'm gonna do this video behind bars. No, I'm not gonna be in prison. I'm going to do it for my bike saddle and I'm going to talk through the differences as I ride. We're going to do a cross country lap and we're going to compare the times of the two bikes. That should satisfy the cross country speed freaks that want to know which one could be faster for them. But I'm also going to talk through the ride characteristics and talk about which bike would be better for which individual. The Giant XTC Plus is a hardtail that accepts 27.5 plus wheels and that's how it comes out of the box but it also can accept 29er wheels. So I've taken the 29er wheels off my full suspension cross country race bike. So this is a hardtail with a full carbon frame. It's got pretty much a Shimano XT drivetrain and Shimano XT brakes. And it's got a Fox fork that's 120 millimeters of travel. My full suspension bike is a Niner RKT9 RDO. It's also a full carbon frame. It's got Shimano XT and race face components and Shimano XT brakes. It too has a Fox fork that's 100 millimeters of travel and the rear suspension is 90 millimeters of travel. Now this bike's not rolling too fast because the race wheels are now on the Giant XTC. So the first day I'm gonna head out on the hardtail, the Giant XTC. I'm gonna do a couple timed cross country loops, see how the times compare. But before and after the loops, I'm gonna talk through the ride qualities of the bike. I'm gonna talk about how the hardtail feels compared to the full suspension. Then the following day, I'll head out on the full suspension bike, the Niner RKT9 RDO using the same wheel, so we'll get a pretty good comparison. I'll talk about how that bike feels compared to the hardtail, and of course, I'll repeat the cross-country laps, and we'll see how the times are. 